Well, hi, my name is Laurent um, and I'm a costume designer um, and I used to work on the Harry Potter franchise and I wanted to talk about all my experience on the films. Funny enough, I've got a background in math and physics and I've got a degree in maths from astronomy. Um, I always wanted to do something creative. I came to London and I think at the time, London gave me the opportunity to express myself um, and be creative. I met the right people and I designed a line of t-shirts, what I call a capsule range. It was just a very small line of t-shirts and they were inspired from the henna tattoos and they were all painted and with crystals and studs on it. And this is how we got spotted. And from that I started working on films and I worked on films for 13 years. I had been working with Jenny Temim on a couple of projects before. And I remember at the end of the summer, I think it was September, we sat um, in London at Momo's restaurant just to have a, a meal. And she said she'd been proposed that project about wizards called Harry Potter. And I had vaguely known about it. Um, and I was like, okay, sure. And she asked me if I wanted to do it. And I agreed to it. Uh, bear in mind, I didn't have much knowledge about Harry Potter, nor did Jenny, to be honest. Uh, we've very quickly caught up with it and read the books, suddenly realized how big it was, and um, read the script, got immersed intensively in that wizarding um, element, and this is how it started. And then I did three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, and more afterwards. People go like, oh my god, but you work on Harry Potter? I'm like, yeah, well, it's, it's Harry Potter. Because it was so immersive for us, it was a job, and um, we created the dream. We didn't experience the dream. It's, it's really weird to express, but at the time I wasn't a fan, and I think that when I, I do talks and talk to people who are actually as actually massive fans, they always wonder why am I not a fan? And I think it's just because we've worked on it, so we've got a different approach to it. And I'm, I'm therefore, as a designer, trying to make it magical. So when, when I started, what was the most exciting, then suddenly I was immersed in that world. Imagine like a kid that you throw in the, in the sweet shop. It's like, where do you start? What's, what's the most thing you need to do? And then it just became this new world I was living 24-7. Um, and then I didn't know it was going to last for one year. It lasted for way longer. Uh, and I'm still in it, obviously. Uh, um, a bit more mature, of course, but I'm still in the Harry Potter world. Um, it's difficult to say what I wanted to do first. Um, it's almost like every time we were doing something or every time we were seeing a new set or designing a new costume or testing new things like the Dementors, for example, it's just such a, so much work and such an experience. It's always like, oh wow, oh, oh wow, oh, oh wow, and this is cool. And then you discover a new set and then you discover new features and then visual effects on the top of it. And that was not just applied for number three, it was all the way through the films. You know, there's always, as a filmmaker, that excitement and as a designer, that creativity that goes behind it from the other departments that inspires you. And um, it's a constant discovery. The mental story is kind of mind-blowing. Um, we made costumes for the, the Dementors. We did tests with wind machines. We did tests then underwater. Um, I remember filming tests in a tank, completely painted in green with a, a train carriage painted in green in the water. And the stone guy just wearing a costume made in silk or black. And um, we shot it and then he came out of the carriage and what happened is totally a mistake and magical as well. 
Because he was underwater, the fabric just stayed, and then as he pulled out, the fabric still was there and then just came out. And if you reverse that, that's exactly what you see in the film. And they use that as a reference uh, in visual effect, because afterwards, uh, visual effect took over and all the dementals of this year are fake um, in the film. But that initial thing that you see the fabric arriving and then you see the hand grabbing the door or the carriage, it's because of that mistake, that guy who stayed and then pulled out and the fabric just stayed in place and then came out. But when you reverse that, that's what you get in the film. The underwater shooting is actually fascinating. Um, it's fascinating to... It's very difficult and tricky because once when we shot, for example, the Triwizard Tournament uh, on 4, uh, we shot obviously the scenes underwater for the lake. Um, and you learn so much because once you let your actor go, if you haven't done anything you need to do, it's too late. He's in the water. It's not like you can just pop in and just change something. Um, but also we realize that when you see Harry Potter, for example, is wearing that burgundy vest. Actually, when we put that in the water, it turned and it became black, almost black. So what we had for scenes under the water, we had a very bright red vest, which funny enough, when you put it immersed into the water, it just became burgundy. So it's all these things that you learn as you test and as you do trials before you actually shoot. I learned a lot on Potter because you kind of touch everything, flying people, uh, cables, stunts, jumping, fire, water. So uh, over all my years on um, Harry Potter, and I also became responsible of the second unit, which is all the units dealing with the stunts and all the technical side of, of the films as well. So um, I, I touched base on all of that, and I think it was a, a massive learning curve. And also, as a designer, you think, okay, I need to design something because it goes through this, this and that. And I think it was uh, very important for me to leave that experience. I think the most difficult Quidditch scene we shot was on number three because it happens under the rain. And so imagine you've got not only but all the elements of the flying broomstick, the broomstick moving, the cameras, things, all the elements need to attach to, uh, to him and whatever we had to do for that costume to work. But also, you've got the rain machines going on. And as soon as you start having water and rain, it, it becomes quite difficult. For example, something that people don't think about, the goggles that they're wearing, it steams up very quickly. So we had to put like fairy liquid on it so it doesn't steam as much. Uh, and then it's all that thing of having a, a costume completely wet every time you do a scene or you shoot. And that's something that people don't see, how much work goes into the flying stuff. Uh, I'm talking about Quidditch, I'm talking about when you see Harry Ron Hermione escaping on broomsticks, I'm talking about that seat on Harry Potter 6, you know, when they all fly away. Um, it's, that costume is actually transformed the pattern is completely recut to look good on a broomstick. Because obviously they're not sitting on a broomstick, they're saddle, and the, the trousers are split into two legs that actually go over it. The back of the t-shirts and the tops are extended so when they lean forward, you don't see the bum. Um, then some of the clothes like Madai Moody flying on his broomstick, the cloaks have been really extended to create that beautiful visual cloak floating in the air and all the costumes have been made like that. Um, talking about the extending cloak, also when you see Dumbledore falling off the tower when he dies, his costume has been extended so you get that extra fabric that gives uh, a rather dramatic effect. What would have I kept as a costume? And I think, yeah, definitely Sirius Black because I drew it. Or a school uniform, obviously Harry's. Because I think when we started working on um, Harry Potter 3, we changed all the look for the uniforms. And I must say, I like the fact that we added some um, colors inside the clothes. In that case, what my favorite costume is, um, two two of them for two different reasons. Um, 
Dumbledore. Michael Gombin's Dumbledore costume because when I started working on Harry Potter 3, I was doing illustrations for Jenny and I worked very heavily on that costume. So for me, it's symbolic of the start of my work on Harry Potter. So that's number one. And then number two, I must say, I love the way that um, Snape has been designed because it's a timeless costume. Julia and I would design the costume at the time on Harry Potter 1 and we kept that costume throughout eight films. He never changed, which somehow makes him magical and a wizard, you know, he never changes, it's always the same. But it's also such impactful and strong design that never came out of wizarding fashion. It always worked and it always works throughout the films. And I think it's a very clever piece of design. Always think forward. Always think of how to design something to make it work so you don't have a problem in the future. How it's going to be practical, what you're going to do with it, what are obstacles you're going to have. Um, so if it was for a film, whether it's going to go in the water, so you need to think about all of this, what fabrics you're going to use, what shapes you're going to use. Um, Obviously, if you had uh, a flying scene or else, um, you wouldn't do something too fluffy because you know it's going to interfere. And also it needs to be impactful and it also, also needs to be designed, but not over the top, so it's not ridiculous. Very fortunate I had created my company afterwards, Lolo Creative, and We've been super fortunate to carry on working with the Harry Potter franchise as well. Um, like I said, my work with Universal Studios in Orlando, but in Japan, in China, um, and, and in Hollywood as well. But we also worked with a tour. We've got an ongoing relationship with the Harry Potter tour in London and the upcoming one in Japan. And it's allowed me to carry on my work and design for other attractions. And we've developed all that costume design and uniforms within the company and from working on the films and then working on my own and now I've got a company with about 10 to 20 people working with me when I now design, design for the theme parks and staff uniforms I try to make it impactful that it's, it reflects Harry Potter vision uh, but it still has to be really practical and washed over and over and over and over. On the film, when you've got one actor, it's got a few repeats, for example, it's got like three or four of the same shirt. But that actor also have one dresser who actually looks after his garment, makes sure that he's hand washed or really looked after and if there's any wear and tear, which is not intentional, um, it's repaired straight away by hand else. When we design for theme parks, it all goes through uh, cycles of machine uh, washing machines and we have to think differently, have different fabrics, uh, different type of prints. Instead of doing an embroidery, I like doing digital prints of embroidery. So you get that effect, but it's actually not made by hand, so therefore it's cost effective as well. Um, and we use different tricks that obviously it's a different system um, and also that that garment is, is worn so many times I think it's got a life of 90 days uh, or been worn for 90 days um, and we do enormous quantities as well so it's slightly different than films Harry Potter was a village it was like 900 people working on this uh, we have the first unit, second unit, and then all the departments and everyone was within the same roof. Um, I worked on other films, even big ones like Skyfall. Still, you don't get the same amount of people um, and such a big crew. In that sense, the work on Harry Potter was already magical just because of that. And also, What was really interesting about Harry Potter, we were allowed to do the tests and trials and 
rehearsals and see if it worked what we did in, in every department, not just in mine. You know, we had rehearsals with cars and explosions and testing fabrics underwater. And like I was mentioning that scene about um, the Triwizard Tournament, we realized that the t-shirt changed color before we shot because we did test on the water to see what colors work the best and how the fabric would react as well. And also we had to um, put little weights at the bottom of the shorts and the t-shirt. So when it goes under the water, the t-shirt stays down. It's all these things that you have the time to experience um, and test when you work on a film like Harry Potter. The feeling of this group of people working films after films together, it's almost like you created a family. And for some strange reason, you don't find that in any other films afterwards. Because for the other films, you just come in and out, and then that's it. Where Harry Potter, you knew exactly what everyone was good at, where to get it, who to speak to, what to do straight away. Um, and I'm still friends with a lot of people from um, Harry Potter, funny enough, and I still work um, and I'm employing a lot of people from Harry Potter too.